We have made a very popular video on stateless versus stateful application and I got a lot of views. It is it is it essentially explains the difference between stateful and state, stateless application using an authentication example. But the only problem with that video was it was just theoretical. I didn't show any real code or examples of how a stateful application looks like or how a stateless application looks like. Thus, this is the video I want to do in order to show you guys something more practical. In this video, we will talk about uh, how a stateful application looks like, how a stateless application looks like. We're going to show you some code. Uh, I'm going to use Python in this example, but you can pretty much use any application to, to essentially understand that, right? With that said, let's just jump into this video. If you're new here, guys, welcome. My name is Hussein. And in this channel, we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing. Hit the like button if you like this video. And that's it. Let's just jump into this video. So TLDR, stateful versus stateless. When you have a web server that is running maybe Node.js application or a Python application or a Ruby application or Java application or any kind of application, right? And, uh, and you have a client, if that client is dependent on a certain state of that server, then it's a stateful. If the client does not depend on any state on, this, on, the, on the backend, then it's a stateless. So what does that really mean? So in a nutshell, here's how you can find if your application is stateless or stateful. If you can, at any point in the lifetime of application, destroy your application and restart it, right? And the client will never notice it, then your application is stateless. If your client crashes when you restart your application or the client can no longer resume that session, then your application is stateful because it, the client depends on some sort of a state at the server, right? So that's the easiest way to find out if your application is, is stateful or stateless, right? While a, cl a client is connected, restart the application at the back end. Just restart it, okay? Now, the client might... At one certain request of the client might fail, and that's okay, right? But if the next request succeeds and the application resumes normally, then it's the stateless application, right? Instagram is a perfect inst uh, stateless application. The, the so backend restarts and destroyed all the time, right? But the application, you don't always like have to close and reopen for it to work. The moment you have to close and reopen your client, right, then it's really stateful. You have to reset the state, okay? Let's just jump into some practical thing. Okay, here, guys, I have two applications that I have written using Python at the back end, and the front end is just JavaScript. And what this applications, these two applications, does is literally connect to a Postgres database uh, that and the back end that are on my machine actually, and then reads one record, display it, close the database. I had written two versions of this application, a stateful version and a stateless version. So the stateful version has three buttons, right? The first button, you click connect to the database and in the back end, we will connect to the database and we create the first variable, which is the connection. So you can already think of a state, right? I'm gonna show you guys uh, the code in, in a minute, but I wanna explain to you how this works. So you connect, and then there is another button that calls another endpoint to read from the connection we just opened, okay? And the third button is close the database, okay? Which will basically destroy that TCP connection on the backend, and then just freeze, freeze up the memory. Does that make sense, right? And the stateless version, there's one button, it's called stateless read. And what this does, when you click that, that click will connect to the database, read, returns the result, close the database. It's all on one call, okay? So that's the only difference. So let's see if, if this works, right? Stateless, I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna get that record, which is the employee ID or profile ID and the name, which is Heidi, okay? Works fine, okay? And the stateful version, I am going to connect to the database. And I'm gonna get for true, which is mean, hey, you're all cool, all right? And then I'm gonna call read, which reads the database. And then I'm gonna call close, which says, hey, I'm successful. If 
In the stateful version, I do not call these methods in that particular order. I'm screwed, right? Because now I close the database. If I read, I'm going to get an error, right? That's a not a very good user experience, right? So that means that always I have to connect and then read and then close, right? So if I, for example, connect and then maybe connect again, I just establish two connections on the servers, right? That, that might work, but essentially you have to establish this, you have to always maintain the state somehow, okay? The stateless version, I don't have this problem at all, okay? I always can call, right? And it will always work, okay? Regardless of this, because the sequence of the events is always uh, ordered, right? So let's, let's uh, try some, um, some fancy stuff, okay? I'm gonna connect to the database here. I'm gonna read but I'm not gonna close it. I am going to go to the server, which is, this is the stateless server running on port 2000. This is the stateful version, right? Stateful version running on port 3000. I am going to destroy it and then just respawn it up. That's what I did. I don't know. The server restarts, something happened on the server. The client thinks, it's connected, right? So the next thing it's gonna do is just read. But guess what? We just got an error. It's like, what, what happened? It was working a second ago. Now when I click read, it's not working. So that means the client has to reset its state. Either refresh, right? Or reconnect, right? Now it's working, as you can see. With the stateless version, that doesn't happen because if I click state, oh, it's always working. I always get back the results, right? Let's try with the stateless. Stateless, I'm gonna kill the stateless, right? I'm going to call. I'm gonna get an error, obviously, this application is not running. But now if I spin it up and I kick state, right? Works, as if the client doesn't know, right? It's because it doesn't maintain any state of the current state of the application that, hey, we are connected. Hey, now we are closed. Hey, now we can read. Hey, it doesn't have any of that, right? So that was a very long <laughs> expansion of stateless versus stateful. That's the application. Let's go through code, guys. How about that? Let's go through code. Here's the code. Let's show the stateful version of first, okay? For the stateless ver stateful version, as you may know, okay, and, uh, I'm gonna plug myself here, guys. So if you wanna know, like, if you wanna learn more about Python, I have a Udemy course, Python on the back end. Check out that. Uh, I'm gonna reference that uh, course link here. There's some, I think it's like $10. You can get it for $10. Like, ignore the Udemy price, I don't know, $200 or whatever. You don't have to do that. If you click on this link, you're gonna get a discount. It's, it's only $10, so I'm just plugging myself here. But you don't have to buy it. You can always watch this uh, channel and you'll be supporting me by that uh, by doing that thank you so much that's it so this is the essentially the python application here so it's a tornado app and we have made a lot of videos about tornado now but about that python course i explained by python in the back and essentially i explained the whole thing from scratch okay but here's the rest endpoints that i have i have a state full get handler which returns the html page i have a connect handler and i have a read handler and i have a close and this is the rest api essentially right so the connect let's look take a look at the connect right notice that we have a global variable here defining the connection right that's the first your first clue for for the state thing right okay so if i connect here you can see there is a post request that I'm making from the HTML page. By the way, guys, I'm gonna make this source code available in the description below, so you don't have to like pause the video and look at the code. I'm gonna the, there will be a good help page in the description showing you the code. All right, so we will use uh, PsychoPG2 and uh, we connect to my database, which is a Docker instance on my machine, and then says okay, success. That's what it does and then stores this in a global variable called con, okay? The second read endpoint called literally depends that you have a con, okay, connection, and then uses the, the establish a cursor and then just reads that SQL statement, fetches all, converts it into a JSON, 
dumps it back to the client, right? And there is an error just shows that, uh, hey, there is an error, I couldn't read the database. And that's the git request to get the stale, uh, stable. That's actually, we don't read really, we don't really need that. Okay, so the final one is actually close. The close command is actually just one line of code, just closes the connection, okay? Now, let's look at the, I know you guys have a lot of questions like, hey, we can really rewrite this to be state to stateless, and you absolutely are right. You can rewrite this to be state, but I'm showing you an example of how a stateful looks like. A stateless, how does a stateless looks like? Okay, a stateless application is literally just two classes, the git handler, which returns the HTML, so we can make all this fancy calls using fetch API. By the way, guys, I made a fetch API uh, videos. I'm going to reference it here. Uh, okay, so stateless handler takes makes a post request. Here's what it does. It's a complete nested method. It connects to the database, creates a cursor, makes the query, fetches the query, closes the cursor altogether, closes the connection, and then returns the results. One call. Does all of that, right? Obviously, now you're thinking, hey, stateless is better than stateful. I did not say that. Look at how expensive this thing is. This the thing will not scale, guys. You cannot close and open, close and open connection. This is very expensive. You, if you watch this, the, these uh, the videos I made about TCP versus UDP, look, take a look at TCP VD. TCP does a lot of stuff. So doing a connect, establishing a TCP connection to the database, it is expensive. There's a lot of handshaking going on. There's a lot of acknowledgement, crowd control, congestion control, whatever it's called. There is a lot going on. So you are doing this with every request. Imagine you have a thousand users. Your database will just die. Your bandwidth to the database will just get saturated, right? So that's not a very good. Yes, it's a stateless. Yes, it uh, it scales horizontally, if you will, right? So if I spin up another instance, it's it doesn't care. I can put a load balancer behind my stateless application, and nicely it will nicely just scale, right? With a stateful version, obviously it's not scalable at all, right? Horizontally, but it is kind of good because you can have multiple clients connect. Once you establish a connection, you have a, a global connection, you can reuse it for multiple clients, right? So you don't have to establish a connection every time. So there is a pros and cons, as we explained in the, the other video, right? And that's back to you guys, right? So you have to, as a software engineer, you have to really think about your design and what is the best approach to do this. Obviously, a mix of stateful versus stateless is the best way to go. You want to make application stateless, but also have some sort of a state that a cache, a pool of connections, if you will, and then you reuse these pools of connection, right, every time, right? So, so you'll have to open a connection, set of connection, and just you reuse these connections every time as, as users, uh, as you have more requests, right? Does that make sense, guys? All right, guys, uh, that's it for me. Very quick video. I'm going to reference the, uh, the code for you guys to check it out, but uh, essentially, I didn't show you the HTML code. It's it's very straightforward. We have a lot of JavaScript uh, videos that we have made in the in the channel. This channel, check them out as well. I talk about the Fitch API. I talk about all that stuff, right? So how to make a Fitch request. So this is the basically this is the built-in command, by the way, guys, in the browser. I don't like to use a third library to make a simple Fitch command, right? So this is like the built-in thing. Right, gets the root and then just displays an, an alert message. That's the stateless version. Stateful a little bit more, uh, has more code in it because you have to make three calls, connect, read, and then close. That's it, right? Hopefully, ho hopefully you like this video, guys. Give it a like if you like it. Subscribe for more content. Check out the other content on this channel, and I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.